Okay, so Tuesday's English lesson. On Monday, you read, you listened to chapters one, two, and you read chapter three of this story, Diary of the Killer Cat. And you, you listened to and talked about some of the qualities of a diary. So today we're going to do some comprehension and we're thinking about the two types of question we normally ask. One is the recall question where the answer's in the text. You know, what was the cat's name? Um, what did it kill? And the answer's there in the text. And the other is those inference questions where we have to work it out from clues in the text where the answer's not completely there. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to listen to chapter four and then we'll talk about the work that you've got to do. So let me just share my screen so you can see story. Here we go. There we go, Thursday. Okay, so listen carefully. Just check on the sound. Share sound. There we go. And then you can you can listen to the story. Okay. Let's go. Thursday. Okay, okay. I'll try and explain about the rabbit. For starters, I don't think anyone's given me enough credit for getting it through the cat flap. That was not easy. I can tell you it took about an hour to get that rabbit through that little hole. That rabbit was downright fat. It was more like a pig than a rabbit, if you want my opinion. Not that any of them cared what I thought. They were going mental. It's Thumper, cried Ellie. It's next door's Thumper. Oh, lordy, said Ellie's father. Now we're in trouble. What are we going to do? Ellie's mother stared at me. How could a cat do that? she asked. I mean, it's not like a tiny bird or a mouse or anything. That rabbit is the same size as Tuffy. They both weigh a ton. Oh, nice. Very nice. This is my family, I'll have you know. Well, Ellie's family, but you take my point. And Ellie, of course, freaked out. She went berserk. It's horrible, she cried. Horrible! I can't believe that Tuffy could have done that. Thumper's been next door for years and years and years. Sure, Thumper was a friend. I knew him well. She turned on me. Tuffy, this is the end. That poor, poor rabbit. Look at him. And Thumper did look a bit of a mess, I admit it. I mean, most of it was only mud. And a few grass stains, I suppose. And there were quite a few bits of twig and stuff stuck in his fur. And he had a streak of oil on one ear. But no one gets dragged the whole way across a garden and through a hedge and over another garden and through a freshly old cat flap and ends up looking as if they're just off to a party. And Thumper didn't care what he looked like. He was dead. The rest of them minded, though. They minded a lot. What are we going to do? Oh, this is dreadful. Next door will never speak to us again. We must think of something. <laughs> And they did. I have to say, it was a brilliant plan, by any standards. First, Ellie's father fetched the bucket again and filled it with warm, soapy water. He gave me a bit of a look as he did this, trying to make me feel guilty for the fact that he'd had to dip his hands in the old fairy liquid twice in one week. I just gave him my old, I am not impressed, stare back. Then Ellie's mother dunked Thumper in the bucket and gave him a nice bubbly wash and a swill about. The water turned a pretty nasty brown colour, all that mud, and then glaring at me as if it were all my fault, they tipped it down the sink and began over again with fresh soap suds. Ellie was snivelling, of course. Do stop that, Ellie, her mother said. It's getting on my nerves. If you want to do something useful, go and fetch the hairdryer. So Ellie trailed upstairs, still bawling her eyes out. I sat on the top of the dresser and watched them. They upended poor Thumper and dunked him again in the bucket. Good job he wasn't his old self. He'd have hated all this washing. And when the water finally ran clear, they pulled him out and drained him. 
Then they plonked him on newspaper and gave Ellie the hairdryer. There you go, they said. Fluff him up nicely. Well, she got right into it, I can tell you. That Ellie could grow up to be a real hot shot hairdresser the way she fluffed him up. I have to say, I never saw Thumper look so nice before, and he lived in next door's hutch for years and years, and I saw him every day. Hiya, Thump! I'd sort of nod at him as I strolled over the lawn to check out what was left in the feeding bowls further down the avenue. Hi, Tough! He'd sort of twitch back. Yes, we were good mates. We were pals. And so it was really nice to see him looking so spruced up and smart when Ellie had finished with him. He looked good. What now? said Ellie's father. Ellie's mum gave him a look. The sort of look she sometimes gives me, only nicer. Oh no, he said. Not me. Oh no, 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 no. It's you or me, she said. And I can't go, can I? Why not, he said. You're smaller than I am. You can crawl through the hedge easier. That's when I realised what they had in mind. But what could I say? What could I do to stop them? To explain? Nothing. I'm just a cat. I sat and watched. Okay, so that's the first part of the, the listening. So if I stop sharing that and then share the question page so you can see it. Share, share, share. There we go. So you've listened to the chapter four. I know you've got on please interview questions one here. You've got two questions to answer. The first one is that recall question. Can you please describe the state of the rabbit after it had been dragged into the house? So if you think it was covered in blue paint, you haven't listened to the video carefully, um, but you would write the rabbit was covered in blue paint. So remembering to answer in decent sentences with full stops and capital letters. So the answer to that one is in the text. The second one is an inference question, and the answer isn't exactly in the text. So what was it Tuffy believed his owners had in mind to do once the rabbit had been washed? Okay, so there's some clues in the text but it's about what you think, okay? It's an inference question. So have a try at that. When you've done those two, your next bit of task is to read the police interview questions two and three. If you look down, here's police interview questions two. So you need to read the next chapter and here are the questions, okay? And they are some inference and some recall. So that's what you need to do. That's nice and simple for today. And then now that you've read um, chapter five, what do you predict? That's your final question. What do you predict will happen in quest in chapter six? Okay. So two questions, read the next chapter, four questions and a prediction. And that's all you've got to do today. So. That's it for today. Enjoy. Bye-bye.